Welcome back to Sarah Grace Pizza Company. Today we are making chocolate turtle rollout sugar cookies and I'm so excited. These are like a really flavorful, kind of a gourmet type cookie and they can be rolled out and decorated just like any other sugar cookie. These are some that I made just a minute ago. You can see there's two types of dough here. Hey Gloria! And one dough is a caramel cookie dough. I'm gonna try and get where y'all can, I'm not cutting all across my face here. One of the doughs is a caramel cookie dough, and one of the doughs is a chocolate cookie dough, and then it's all mixed in with this like sticky caramel pecan yumminess. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that today. I hope that this live video is sharing to the Cookie Confidence group. If anyone is in the Cookie Confidence group watching this video right now, could you let me know with like a thumbs up or something? I'd really appreciate it. I'm doing this from my phone so that I can kind of move y'all around with me today. And um, I have it set up so that every live video I do should share to that group. But if it doesn't, I apologize and I will share it in just a second. I'm gonna show y'all how this cookie looks on the inside. Isn't that beautiful, y'all? These taste delicious. Hey, Tina, how are you? All right, so let's get started. We're gonna start with the pecan caramel mixture. Now, this has to go in the microwave for a second and melt. Then it has to go onto a baking sheet and into the oven for a second. So that's why we do that first, so that it can be cooling. I'm gonna grab a glass bowl. And y'all, I apologize, filming a recipe on a live video is kind of hard because I'm kind of like turning around and back and forth and um, I try my best to get everything out and have it accessible, but y'all just bear with me as I kind of try to figure this whole thing out. This is my first time filming a full recipe where you can see my face and see all the food. And it's new, but we'll get the hang of it. So, I am taking some pecans. They came in the bag about this size. Can y'all see that? They're about fingernail, thumbnail size. They're pretty large. So I put them in my food processor here and ground them up a little bit and now they're a lot smaller. So y'all can see that is more like, I would call that pea size or smaller. And I'm gonna put about a cup of these into my bowl. Now these are very loose measurements. Y'all know I'm not a hard and fast measure when it comes to bacon. I'm in the minority there. I know a lot of people say that you need to measure really exact when it comes to baking. And I think when it comes to cakes and things like that that have a lot of baking soda and um, leavening agents that cause all those reactions, that may be true. But for cookies, I feel like it's more of a, you do need to stick to the recipe, but you can kind of play with it a little bit more than you can some baked goods. So I've got my cup of pecans in the glass bowl and you want something glass or otherwise microwave safe for this because it is gonna go in the microwave. We're gonna pop two tablespoons of butter. It doesn't matter if it's salted, unsalted, use what you got. And we're also gonna take some of this Smucker's caramel flavor topping. You can get this in the ice cream section. It's not sponsored by Smucker's, I'm just, this is the brand that makes it. <laughs> and we're gonna put some of this into our pecans. Now this is about a half a can that I put in here, or half a jar. We're gonna put about half of a jar into that microwave safe bowl. A bit of vanilla. I think of vanilla kind of like salt for baked goods. I know you put salt in baked goods, but when you're making savory foods, this is about a tablespoon of vanilla, teaspoon, tablespoon. I'll look and see what I put on the actual ingredient list. A splash of vanilla extract. You just do whatever the Lord leads you to do when it comes to a splash of vanilla. Whatever you interpret as a splash, you go for it. So we've got our splash of vanilla in there and we're gonna add some sea salt. Um, I said a pinch. It doesn't matter if you like that really nice, salty, caramel taste, go for a fourth a teaspoon of sea salt. You just don't wanna put like a ton or anything. Just enough to give it that sea salt and caramel flavor. 
So I'm going to pop this into a microwave for maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Set my spoon aside, trying not to get anything sticky. My microwave is under my counter, by the way. <laughs> hey, Benita. Hey, Gloria. Hey, Tina. All right. I'm seeing everybody tuning in now. Thank y'all so much. I'm going to take a peek and see if we are live in the Cookie Confidence group. And uh, it looks like we're not live there. I'm sorry about that, y'all. If you wanted to watch this from Cookie Confidence today, I apologize. I will share it in just a second. As soon as we get done. Hey, Barbara. All right. We just need that butter to melt, so it'll be okay if it doesn't stay in there the full minute. We just need to get it warm enough to melt that butter. And it's plenty warm. That butter's stirring in. We're going to mix it up here. And it's a little bit liquidy, but don't fret. That's why we're putting it in the oven here in just a minute so that it'll kind of become, it's almost like a pecan nut brittle when it's all said and done. It doesn't quite set up as hard as a brittle because I think that would be a little too crunchy. It's more of just like this sticky, gooey thing that sits in the middle of the cookie and it's fantastic. That's what it's looking like right now. It may look so... Well, not so hot right now. It looks a little soupy. But like I said, no worries. That is what it's supposed to look like. I'm going to grab a baking sheet. I have a baking sheet lined with parchment. And we're going to pour this out onto the baking sheet. And just spread it out evenly. You don't have to stress about how thick it is or anything like that. Just kind of go over it with the back of your spatula or spoon here. And I've got my oven preheated to 350. We're going to pop this in that 350 oven and I'm going to let it bake for about 10 to 15 minutes just until it starts to bubble around the edges and start to kind of bubble around in the middle as well. That's when you know it's getting sticky and starting to set up. So this is going in the oven. All right, now let's get started on our first cookie dough. So the first cookie dough that we're gonna make is the caramel cookie dough. This is basically my vanilla recipe, except with caramel in it. Um, it wasn't very uh, <laughs> fancy or new. We just stuck some caramel in the vanilla recipe. So I'm going to put a half a pound of butter. I buy my butter at Sam's in the one pound blocks because I live in the South and we can get butter in mass quantities here. It's fantastic. <laughs> oh, and I forgot to tell y'all, by the way, if you want to download this little recipe card, it has the instructions and the ingredients on it. That is in the description of the video, and you can just click on that, enter your email, and this will be in your inbox. You can print it off. Um, I've got it set up so that you can print it front and back, and you can just cut it out, and it'll be front and back. So I'm going to pop my half a pound of butter into my mixing bowl. This is a stand mixer with a paddle attachment. That's this one. Everyone asks me, which attachment do you use for dough? It's this one, the paddle attachment. And I got this one with the silicone on it from Amazon. It was like $16, $17. I can't remember exactly. But it is awesome and it makes dough much, much easier. So I'm going to do a cup of granulated white sugar in here with my butter. This is my half a cup measure, so that's why I'm using two. I didn't have quite enough measuring cups and measuring utensils for this video today. I don't know how those vloggers do it that um, have everything pre-measured out in their videos. I didn't get that fancy today. But I'm adding about a fourth of a cup of dark brown sugar. I didn't pack it or anything, just kind of guesstimate it there. And I'm going to cream the butter and sugar together. So when I say cream them together, a lot of people read cream them together and they think mix them together. But something I learned when I first started decorating cookies was 
if you let them cream together, and that means just beat them and let that sugar aerate the butter until it's completely white, the color of cream. That's what it means, creaming together. It's supposed to look like cream when you get done. Um, it starts to turn less yellow, more white because of the air that's been incorporated by the sugar. And that is what makes a really soft, chewy cookie that has that yummy bite to it. So I'm gonna turn my mixer on for a little while, lock it in place here and let it go crazy. It's probably gonna sound a little terrible, <laughs> but while I'm creaming this together, I'm going to start sifting my four cups of all-purpose flour one third cup of cornstarch and half a teaspoon of salt together. So while this is creaming, I'm gonna do my dry ingredients. All right, cover your ears. this nice and yellow like butter looks you know and now that I have creamed it with the sugar just for that little bit that was maybe a minute that it was creaming in the mixer it has turned this lovely fluffy white color and it's mixed with the sugar and it's gotten so fluffy and I hesitate to say luscious because that's an awkward word <laughs> to me I don't know what it is about that word it's just weird anyway it's turned white and creamy and luscious. So, <laughs> it's ready for our next step. And our next step is to add a little bit of vanilla. Now, I'm heavy handed with my vanilla. I don't know how y'all feel about vanilla flavoring, but I think of it kind of like when you're cooking with salt and you're seasoning every layer with salt. I like to season every layer with vanilla when it comes to baking. I just think it gives it that bakery flavor and it's so good. This is just a giant jug of it that I found at Sam's, and I love it. So that's the vanilla going in, and we're also gonna add two eggs, one at a time, before we start incorporating our dry ingredients. So I'm gonna give that just a quick buzz, just to get the vanilla mixed in. And then I'm gonna add one egg at a time while this is mixing all the way. there's not any little pieces that are more eggy or um, you can't see any of the egg white or egg yolk anymore. It's all completely incorporated. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go around with my spatula, scrape down the bowl, scrape down the paddle a bit. While I'm doing that, y'all may have noticed that I cracked the eggs into a separate bowl first. I was always taught to 
crack them into a separate bowl and then place them into your mixing bowl. Um, just in case you ever had a bad egg or in case you had some shell that kind of made its way in there. So that's what I always do. And if y'all don't have one of these spoons, you can get them at Hobby Lobby that has this little hanger on the side. And you can just pop it onto the side of your bowl so that you never lose your spoon. It's so handy. So that's ready to go. Give it one more whisk. And then I'm going to add my dry ingredients in about one cup measures each. So I'll add about a cup, heaping cup. I'm not picky about it. And then I'll mix it on low for just a second until it's pretty much incorporated. And then I'll repeat that process until it's worked all the way through. Incorporated, and you can see when I pull up the mixer, it's starting to get thicker and thicker. Hi, Sandy. How are you? I'm pulling in another cup of flour. Repeat that process. Y'all, I got carried away thinking I was making regular vanilla dough. When you're doing this at home, I want you to add your other half of a jar of caramel before you add your dry ingredients. Add it with your eggs and your vanilla with your wet ingredients, but I'm just going to throw it in now for the sake of the fact that we're on a live video. Disregard that. <laughs> It'll probably still taste the same, honestly. But when you're doing it at home, it's probably going to be neater and easier to mix it in with your wet ingredients. Yeah, that's going to be fine. It looks pretty and fluffy. That's the main thing. And it's turned this really pretty caramel color. All right, and we are going to add in the rest of our dry ingredients a cup at a time. This just keeps you from having the little like, chunky pieces at the bottom of your mixing bowl when um, all of the butter and flour doesn't get quite incorporated together. It's a little bit more time consuming, just a little bit more tedious, but it's definitely worth the time and it saves you half full later. I like to give the bowl a good love tap to get any excess flour that's congregated up here around the edge back down into its proper place. And I'm going to give the bowl a good scrape and add the rest of my dry ingredients. And we are going to call this good to go. Okay. Well, there's my tea towel. I've been trying to keep something handy to wipe my hands on. The rest of our dry ingredients are going into the bowl. And this will be our last mix for the caramel dough. Okay, there is our finished caramel dough. You may think this doesn't look firm enough to be cookie dough, but it is. It's just a kind of soft dough, and that's okay. I like to freeze mine in the freezer so that it's easy to cut cookies from. And I'll show you how I did that here in just a minute. But we're going to place this in some plastic wrap and set it aside. Let's see, Lauren says she has the paddle attachment with the scraper on it and she's not a fan. I really like mine. I was not having much luck with the one I had picking up those small bits of flour off the bottom of my mixer. I've heard great things about the Bosch mixers too. I've heard that people really don't even need um, the silicone attachment when they have the Bosch. So I'd be interested to try that. Barbara said me too. Okay, kind of getting all that off of the paddle there. I'm not going to be too picky about getting all this onto the plastic because in the next recipe we're doing a chocolate dough and it is more of the same. We're just adding cocoa so having the dough in there from the previous batch, if there's just a little bit left on the side, it's nothing to stress about. 
Y'all can tell I'm a pretty laid-back baker. <laughs> all right, all that dough is going into the plastic wrap. I'm trying to scrape it down as best I can, but like I said, if there's just a tiny bit left in there, it's not anything to fret about. I'm not used to baking in my nice clothes. This is kind of freaking me out. I want to be able to like brace it on my belly and get in there, you know. Oh, uh, that's all right. Okay, we're going to wrap this up in the plastic and just set it aside for a minute until we're ready for it and we're going to get started on the chocolate dough. While we're doing that, I need to go ahead and pull the caramel out so that it will not burn. <laughs> This is just about perfect. You can see it's got just a little bit of a dark edge on it. You might not want to use that part. I don't know. It depends on how you feel about caramel and like the taste and texture of it. I like it. I think it's good and it adds a little bit more of a depth to it. This is one that I made earlier that's already cool. So you can kind of see what that's supposed to look like. Barbara said, I have the KitchenAid mixer and I love it. I love my KitchenAid too. Um, I've got the five quart one now too, and I never use it because I'm just so used to using my pink one. But, and it sinks, so I love that. All right, I'm putting another half a pound of butter. This is again, basically the same recipe. We're just gonna add a couple chocolate elements to it. So we've got half a pound of butter going in cup of granulated white sugar, about a fourth a cup of brown sugar again. I find that brown sugar gives my cookies a little extra puff without having to add any baking soda or baking powder. Um, and it just kind of makes them a little more lively to me. It kind of gives them that yummy caramel flavor. So that's going in and that's going to cream together again just like we did earlier in the caramel dough. And while that's creaming together, I'm going to mix my dry ingredients. And for this dough, that's four cups of flour, a fourth a cup, oh, excuse me, a third cup of cornstarch, and a half a teaspoon of salt, plus a third a cup of cocoa powder. So I'll be mixing those up while this is creaming together. Up around the 
edges on that round. Now I have a teaspoon of espresso powder dissolved in a teaspoon of hot water. So this is like a mini espresso. It's only a little bit of chocolate, but you're not going to taste the chocolate. You're going to taste like a richer, am I saying chocolate? I meant coffee. <laughs> That's the beauty of live videos, y'all. You just got to laugh it off. You're not going to taste the coffee. You're just going to taste like a deeper, richer chocolate taste. So this is a little bit of coffee, but coffee is what's going to bring out that yummy chocolate. It's not going to taste like an espresso dough. So that is going in. And at the same time, we are going to add our vanilla. Like I said, I like a big splash. starting to get kind of a light brown color on the butter and we're going to add our two eggs to that and then our dry or our yes our dry ingredients will go in and again i'm just adding the eggs one at a time oh i got a little shell in there it's a good thing i broke it into another bowl i've always heard that if you get the little piece of shell with the eggshell that you just broke It'll kind of attract to it easier like a magnet, and it really works. of one to two cups again, just until those are good and incorporated. Look at that beautiful chocolate color, y'all. Right now. If I wasn't on camera, for being honest, I probably would be. I'm not making this for customers, it's just for my family. So, this is so good. I am going to move this over to the side a bit and I'm going to kind of get set up so that y'all can see my work surface better. I've got a little silicone baking mat laid out here and I'm going to move y'all so that you can see it. Bear with me while I get you adjusted here. Okay, here we go. I've got a nice view of my little flower pot here too. So what we're gonna do is we've got our caramel dough. I'm gonna move my ring light so y'all can see a little better as well. Ignore all the falling sounds, it's fine. can see that all right. Hey, Eileen. Okay, I think we can see that pretty well. Okay, we've got our caramel dough, we've got our chocolate dough, and we have our caramel pecan mixture. So, I'm going to take half of my caramel dough 
And you may want to lay down just a tiny bit of flour on your silicone baking mat or your work surface. It can't hurt. Um, this is a really moist dough. I don't think you're going to find that it's going to get dried out too easily. So I'm going to do about half of this caramel dough. And my hands are clean. Like I said, this is for my family, so I'm just going to get in there. chocolate dough to this board as well. And I kind of like to incorporate them together some. Just kind of make like two little balls of dough sitting side by side. And then I'm going to make a little well in the middle with my hand. Can y'all see that okay? I'll move you a bit closer so you can see. made a little well in the center of this dough with my hand and now I'm going to take my spoon wherever it went. Y'all have trouble keeping up with spoons. I sure do. Especially when I am like in the baking groove. I lose my spoon terribly. I'm just going to use a butter knife for this and I'm scraping a little bit of this pecan caramel stickiness that we put in the oven and placing it inside that well. Now I'm going to take both of these doughs and I'm going to kind of fold them one over the other. So I'm kind of putting the chocolate up on top and then taking the caramel and folding it over. Now that I've done that fold, I'm going to do another well in the center. It's okay if you get sticky, y'all don't worry about it. I don't know if you're a messy baker or not. I've talked to a lot of people who say that they're a little bit OCD about their kitchen or like kind of staying clean while they bake. This may not be the recipe for you if that's the case because it is a messy one, but it's so worth the mess and so worth the time. We're adding some more of that sticky caramel goodness into the well we just created and then we're gonna fold it over. This is kind of like kneading bread, sort of. Press it in with your hands and then fold it over again. I'm going to add a bit of flour on top because like I said, this caramel dough is wanting to be a little bit sticky on me today. Oh. And you may have to employ a bench scraper. I've got one here. wanting to stick, of course it didn't do this the other day when I wasn't on camera, but if it's wanting to stick to the mat, just grab your bench scraper and lift it back up. And then kind of just mush it together. I told y'all it was messy. If you're making this for customers or clients, definitely wear gloves. <laughs> Cynthia said this recipe is for me then. <laughs> Cynthia, we are one of a kind, or two of a kind, I guess. <laughs> I'm a very, very messy baker. Y'all, I'm going to have to give my hands a quick wash because this dough has done a number on them. <laughs> and then I'm going to come back and show you how I roll this out. are washed and I've got my bench scraper ready to scrape any excess that has come onto your seal pat mat away because that does happen sometimes. 
I'm going to reapply a bit of flour. I'm doing it a little thicker this time. And now that I've got this dough on the parchment, I'm going to divide it in half so that it's not quite as difficult to roll out. for me. Um, I don't think it really matters that much, but this way works pretty well for me. And then I'm going to roll from the center, pushing out, and then from the center, pushing toward me. I love to roll at room temperature because if I ever chill my dough, I feel like I'm getting a workout when I try to roll it out, and I'm just not about that. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with the workout. I need it after making this chocolate cookie dough today because let me tell y'all, I'm about to have some chocolate cookies. And I'm going to peel the parchment up just so y'all can see it. Can y'all see that beautiful marbling? I'm going to lean y'all in a little closer. You can see there's some of the caramel, there's some of the chocolate, and there's some of that sticky gooiness that's just, oh, so good. So I'm gonna leave this parchment on top. And this is another messy process, but it works well. This is how I do my vanilla dough. And this is how I get this to cut clean, sharp edged shapes. So that, oh, Cynthia said that's so pretty. It is. <laughs> I think it's perfectly fine to refer to cookie dough as pretty. One time I told my husband I had made some really pretty cookie dough. I was like, the dough I made today was so pretty. He said, uh, what constitutes pretty cookie dough? I'm like, it's just pretty, okay? So we're putting another piece of parchment on this. And I like to pop it onto a baking sheet. If you have a flat baking sheet, which I do somewhere, you can use that. Or you can turn your baking sheet upside down and then pop the whole thing into the freezer, just like this right here. So I'm going to pretend I'm popping it in the freezer, even though I'm setting it in the dining room chair next to me. It'll go in the freezer later. And I'm going to pull out some that has been in the freezer. This is just a little piece that I put in the freezer here a while back. And you can see that it's got those crisp lines. It's a little bit firmed up. And I'm going to use a little bunny cookie cutter to cut out a shape here. And you do have to press pretty firmly. Um, I haven't tried this with a 3D printed plastic cutter. Um, you probably have to use your dough roller to kind of press it in firmly because sometimes you have to cut through those pecans. And my bunny lost his ear. I lifted him up too quickly. He'll be fine. We'll reattach it. <laughs> and we'll do just a couple little bunny faces. Miles and Noah will enjoy having these after supper tonight. We'll lift this bunny a little more slowly. And now, since both have been frozen, this dough has been thawing a little bit longer than I usually allow my dough to thaw. If it's been in the freezer long enough to be frozen solid, I typically allow it to thaw for maybe 10 to 15 minutes. But uh, this has been out since I started filming because I didn't want to be going back and forth to the freezer, so it's just a tiny bit soft. That's okay, though. When I bake these, I just place them on a baking sheet lined with either parchment paper or a reusable baking pad. You can get these little reusable copper baking mats at Walmart, and they're super handy. You press them down to the side of your pan, and they're super easy to work with. So we're going to pretend that we're putting this into a 375-degree oven for 7 to 8 minutes. And when they come out, they will look something like this. You'll still be able to see that beautiful marbling. This is where I broke it in half. Y'all that are tuning in after <laughs> the initial video, don't think that I've just been over here snacking, even though I probably will in just a minute. That's what they look like. You can see that you've got a little bit of the nut and caramel mixture kind of weaved in throughout. 
you've got the caramel cookie dough weaved in with the chocolate cookie dough. So I'm gonna bring y'all back up. Whoops, sorry. I hate to just be like showing you my hands. <laughs> Because they are covered in cookie dough, let me tell you. Thank y'all so much for joining me today. I hope y'all enjoyed it. And again, if you want to download the recipe card, which I cannot find. It's somewhere under a baking mat, I'm sure. But if you want to download the recipe card, you can do that at the link in the description. You can also go to Sarah Grace Cookie Co. And go up to the top where it says free resources. And click on the chocolate turtle cookie recipe download I think is what it's called Lauren said I can't wait to try these I can't wait for you to try them either Lauren let me know how it goes um, y'all tell me what y'all want to see next I got a request this morning for um, oh what did she say um, chocolate mint cookies and in my head I just have this vision of like green cookie dough on the bottom chocolate cookie dough on the top kind of like the Olive Garden mints that you get when you're done with your meal is anyone else this obsessed with Olive Garden? Um, <laughs> Kane and I go way too much. It's a problem. But uh, Lauren said thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you for tuning in today. Um, I can't wait for y'all to try this and let me know how it goes. I hope this can be helpful to you. And if you would like to learn more about cookie decorating, join me over in the Cookie Confidence Facebook group. We are hosting a cookie decorating, well, it's royal icing workshop. It'll be March 4th, 2021, this coming month. I think it's actually next Thursday. Yeah, next Thursday. Let's see. Could you do a video of decorating your cookies with royal icing? Absolutely. Um, so we'll be having a royal icing workshop next Thursday. It's $25. And I'll be there live on Zoom to show you exactly what you need to do. I'll be making royal icing with you. You can use my recipe or you can use a recipe of your own if you need to. Um, or if you'd like to, if you have a recipe that you really like and would like to use it, you're absolutely welcome to use it. But we're going to make it together. I'm going to show you how I make my royal icing. I'm going to show you how I mix it to the right consistency. And you'll get all kinds of resources, recipes, things like that to help you understand mixing to the right consistency. And I'll talk about a few of the common problems that people run into when they're mixing royal icing to the right consistency. A lot of people have to deal with like air bubbles and stickiness and not drying. I've been there and I've had to do all the research in the cookie groups to learn what to do about it. So I'll share all that with you. Um, if you want to sign up for that, you can go to saragracecookiecode.com. It's right there at the top on the home page. It says Consistency Confidence, and you can sign up for it there, and you'll receive a link to the Zoom and a list of materials. Um, if you want to order materials on Amazon, you probably need to go ahead and get signed up pretty quick so you can get those gathered up and get them to your house in time. I live out in the boonies, so two-day shipping for me is more like three- to four-day shipping. But if you live somewhere where they can get to you pretty quickly, then two-day shipping will probably work in your favor. But thank you all again for joining me today. You can learn more at saragracecookieco.com or in Cookie Confidence, the Facebook group. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.